Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is our first day on the job site here for this particular project. I've all, already did two other projects on this property though, but the homeowner actually started digging this out. He dug in the footing here. We're gonna do a retaining wall right along that embankment. And then he moved some sprinkler lines over, got everything kind of out of my way. So all I have to do is haul out the excess dirt in here level everything out and then I might I'm gonna probably widen this footing a little bit more too the depth looks pretty decent but I'm, I'm gonna widen it a little bit because I'm gonna be using 8 inch wide block then I'm gonna be putting number 4 rebar every 24 inch on center for my verticals and then I'll do one horizontal on the top block also, this other area beyond where the retaining wall is going to go, we're going to do a um, little patio addition to widen, uh, widen the existing concrete patio out. What I'm going to do on the block wall is we're just going to uh, bag mix the footing for the block wall with a little portable mixer we'll bring into the uh, backyard or we may mix in the front yard actually and then wheel the concrete back here. But that's how we'll do the uh, block wall footing then we'll wet set the block and then stab all our verticals in there. Once the block wall is all built. Um, We'll get the patio ready, pour the patio out, and at the same time we're pouring the patio, we can go ahead and grout the block wall solid at that point. So here's the footing going in. We went through uh, two pallets. You can see it there in the upper left, out in the front yard. We got we threw down a tarp in the street, and then we went through two pallets, and we're just using some uh, basic concrete mix. 3500 PSI this wall is gonna probably only retain about um, 24 inches at, at the most I would say I have a string line set there, level, and that sets right to the face of the block. I've got two number fours in the bottom of that footing as you can see there. I just bent those rebar on, on site, I put a little hooks in them, and then I'm feeding them down in there and hooking the one or the other I'm not sure which bar but it's hooking one of those horizontals in the footing now this is actually the next day we got the first course in the wet footing now this the mix that we're using to set this is just a typical type s mortar mix right out of a bag from home depot just add water mix well on that existing slab down there we actually use the uh, fiberglass dowels to go in there we drilled and then drove the fiberglass rods they're nice and snug in there The way I do the block is I'll set both ends, two blocks on each end, and then I'll just bring the line up and then fill in the middle. Also I'm hitting the head joints as I go. That's why the block's standing on end there. So I can butter up the end and then drop it in. Now 
we have just enough space behind the block wall that we can get some waterproofing in there so the type of waterproofing we're going to use is a comes in a five gallon bucket it's a powder form we're just going to add some water to it mix it thoroughly with a paddle mixer and application technique for the back of that wall is just going to be a rubber glove and by hand just grab a, a handful of it smooth it out over the back of the wall too tight to get a trowel in there or sponge float or anything so it'll be all hand work Now that I have two blocks on that end, I can pull the line across and then fill in the middle. Now this block may in the future get a stone facade on the front of it, potentially, but in the meantime it's just going to be standard gray precision block with a flat 2 inch cap. Now, when we when we actually um, shot this in with an ele with the laser level for the elevation of the, the footing height, all we really had to make sure of that it was level for one thing. The other important factor is that it was low enough to pour concrete over it and still be at the existing patio height. So that was basically how we established footing height on this one. We have existing elevations like the patio slab. We knew we wanted to be about three to four inches below that patio slab to top of footing so we get some concrete over that without having to uh, having to chip it out so there's the chalk line as you can see there now what we're going to do is uh, glue this expansion foam to the wall we're just using some 3m and heat spray on adhesive Now what we can do is uh, go ahead and pour the slab, fill up the block at the same time because we're pumping it. Makes it really easy to fill the block up at this point. Once that's filled up, we can go ahead and start the cap. That's all 3 8 inch fiberglass rods. And we did a drill and drive right in those areas. And I was surprised that uh, we were actually able to hit those with a sledgehammer, drive them into a nice tight hole, and it didn't really phase the fiberglass rods. Pretty stout. So here's poor day. Got a couple of stepping stones going in over there on the left. This is a 3000 PSI mix, 3 8 inch rock. I have, uh, we have the pumper, Alex, and then we also have uh, Timmy and Tyler, my two sons, and then me. 
on this pour out. Also, I added some fiber mesh when the concrete truck arrived. Threw that right into the truck, let it mix for about three minutes, then it was good to go. That's a four foot wide magnesium bull float with a rocker arm on it. Now we're running a 14 inch wide walking edge or half inch radius all the way around the foam and along the 2x4. Putting a couple joints in here, we used the 3 foot cutter blade to cut the initial joints and then we followed it up with this particular walking joiner which is a 3 quarter deep half inch radius. That first cutter was a 2.5 inch deep, 3 foot long. And then we went over it once with the funny trowel. Now we're going to hit it one time off the knee boards or sliders. And those are fiberglass sliders. So we got a lot of fiberglass going on. We got the fiber mesh, fiberglass fiber mesh. We've got the fiberglass rods, and now we've got the fiberglass sliders. All I need now is a fiberglass bowl float, a fiberglass hand float, and it will be everything fiberglass. Here's the 50% horsehair, 50% nylon broom. Right there in the end, we got a little bit of the primer into uh, this first start point from the pump hose so dried a little bit slower that's why I'm kind of skipping over that section most of the primer we captured in some buckets but there was still a little re residual there primer for the hose is just water but it does make it dry slower when you get a wet spot That wraps up the concrete work. Now we're back at it again the very next day. There's a little touch up on some of the wall. A little tucking. This is a two inch high block cap, 16 long, eight inches wide. Since we have the waterproofing on the back of the wall already and we have that open trench behind it, the homeowner is actually going to backfill with gravel just for drainage reasons. And then also on that first course we set, we left those head joints 
you know, end to end on the block. We left those open, no mortar in between those. So the water could potentially go through the gravel and then push out the bottom right onto the slab and exit to the front of the house. Also, we've already did two jobs on this particular property. We've did the patio slab. We also did a shed slab. And now we're back at it again. And on, on the other pours, we did a saw cut the long way, as you see what we're doing here. So we just maintain that same same type of workmanship with the saw cut right down the middle so everything matches. The important thing about the waterproofing on the back of that wall is that uh, you could put stucco on there now you could put anything on there and water trying to penetrate through the wall it's not going to affect anything that's adhering to it because it's waterproof now. Now if you don't have that it'll push off stucco, paint, this is about anything you try to stick to that wall it'll come right off as the water migrates through the wall without the waterproofing so there it is a nice beautiful job thanks for watching make sure you like share subscribe hit the notification button that way you'll get notified when i upload the next video have a good one